All right, 7-1, day two. It's still dealing with proportions, but these get a little bit more difficult. And so, <coughs> excuse me, that's why I decided to make a second day. Uh, basically, what happens here is you're given a picture, and you're told certain ratios that have to hold true. Now, you couldn't just guess these proportions we have over here. You kind of have to be told these for right now. As we get through this chapter, you'll be able to figure them out on your own. But right now, they just give you a picture, and they tell you, well, that's the proportion that has to hold true. Figure out the blanks that are missing in the table. And so the easiest thing to start with is to fill in the picture as much as you can with the information already in the table. So here it says that AB is 4. So you just find AB, and you put 4 in there. And then BC is unknown. So we'll wait this thing. CD is 5. DE is 7.5. And AF is 2.25. Okay, so that's basically what the picture would look like if we got started. Now, sometimes the picture isn't going to be as helpful as, say, the proportion is, and then sometimes the proportion won't be as helpful as the picture. So you got to kind of look at them both. So now that we've got the picture figured out, well, why don't we go ahead and figure out and fill it in in the proportion? So do we know AB, this top left one? Yeah, that's 4. Over BC, do we know that one? No. So we probably want to put some variable there, something that we can figure out. And most people stick with x. So then I would also put it in the picture and say, OK, that's x right there. Okay, Because you never know which part's going to be more helpful. So look at them both. Equals, do we know cd? Yeah, that's 5. It's just sitting right up there. And ed or de, yep, that's 7 and a half. Okay, do we know ef? No. Do you think it would be wise to also put x for ef? Because is it possible they're the same letter or the same value? It is, but maybe let's be careful. Let's make EF maybe Y. So then in your picture, make it Y. And then AF is 2.25. So now that we take a look, which one in the end is probably going to be more helpful this time, the picture or the proportion that we have over here? I think more than likely the proportion is probably going to be a little bit more helpful than the picture is. Because what you can do, if you remember from your worksheet, we did have a couple. I gave you, I think, two of them that had three sets, right? And all you have to do is basically just focus on the ones you want to deal with at that time. And if I just look at those right there, is that going to help me figure out x? Yeah. And remember the way I taught it is take that diagonal, which is 5x, and set it equal to that diagonal. Well, how about 7.5 times 4? Anybody know that one? It is 30. Very good. Okay, and once you take one diagonal times the other one, you can just, now we get to the algebra we've been seeing for at least two, three years. Divide by five. And so x in this problem is six. But I guess the question is, is did the problem even have an x in it when we started? Well, we kind of put one in, right? So x is six, but what really equals six for this problem? bc, very good, because you notice bc is here, and that's where we put x. So right there, why don't you just put it right in your table that bc ends up being six. Okay, so that, that wasn't so bad. So to get y, all you're going to do then is focus on whichever two, once again, are going to be most helpful. And I think the ones I just boxed in red are now going to be much more helpful. So you take that diagonal, which is 7.5y equals, and then you got to take 5 times uh, 2 and a quarter. Well, that's a little bit more complicated, 5 times 2 and a quarter. Well, 5 times the 2 is 10. If you had 5 quarters, you had a dollar and a quarter, correct? So how much is that total then? 11.25. Now these might not look like they're going to work out as well, and they're not too bad. It definitely doesn't work out to a, to a whole number. But now we're to algebra that we're much more accustomed to. So what is 11.25 divided by 7.5? 1.5. Well, once again, was there even a Y in the problem when we began? No, we kind of put it in there to help us figure out, well, what is that piece there? And so in this problem, y is actually where we have EF sitting here, and so 1.5 would go there. So are there any questions on that problem? You notice again that sometimes the picture was helpful, sometimes the proportion was helpful, but in this one, I think the proportion was way more helpful than the picture was. Any questions? Well, I think we have a similar picture on the next one, just different information, and actually I think more information asked for.
So, same picture. I think it's the exact same proportion, isn't it? Now I've asked for more information. There's more blanks. So, let's get going and kind of put the information in. A, B is 8. Okay, so put 8 there, and I'll also put 8 over here. Over, well, B, C is 10. Okay, over here, B, C is 10. C, D, I don't know. Was not given. Yeah, substitute, put a variable in there, and, and X is probably pretty common, but if you like a different letter, you can go with that. We'll put X in there, and so here is C, D over here. Here it is, X over E, D. Well, they gave us that one, so 13.75, right? And so E, D is 13.75. E, F, oh, I don't know that one. So should I use X again? Probably not. There's a chance they're the same. But were they the same in the last problem we just did X and Y? No, they were even close. What, one was six and the other one was one and a half? They were even close. So let's choose something else, maybe Y. There's Y. And A, F. Well, we don't know that one either. Hmm. Well, let's try Z for now and see if we can come up with something else. Well, I'm looking at this problem and I'm thinking, well, you know what? C, D, which we have re relabeled X, looks like something we can solve for. Because if you look over here, well, we almost have that proportion filled up. So that's something we can solve for. Why don't we do that first and see what comes of that? So let's go ahead. We'll take 10 times x, and then 8 times 13.75. Well, 110 even? Right. Really? All right. We'll, we'll let it be 110 even. Divide by 10. So x is 11. Now, once again, remember what x is really in this problem. We just called it x. It's really what CD is. Okay. Well, what are all these other, other blanks we've got here? Hmm. Over here, it tells me that EA in our table. EA is 6.75. That that might prove important. Let's put that in. Well, that could be helpful. Can we fill in any more of the blank now? Well, we know X is over here is 11. It's asking for AC right here. Is that something we can calculate right now, Heather? Yeah. Okay. Now, did you have a question before I called on you, or no? Okay. Now, how about uh, the next one, CE? Is that something we can solve for now? Okay. The EC is however much that is, and that looks a little harder to add than it really is. 24.75. Now, here's the key. These three at the end, A, C, C, E, and A, E, they're not even in this proportion over here, are they? So I can't really use those. So basically, where we should be focusing right now is the Y, the Z, and the 6.75. <coughs> but if you try using that setup right there, yeah, I know this is 11 up there, but there's still two variables. So any ideas on how you do that? Is everybody good with this math so I can erase some of this stuff? How do you go about that? We know that 11 over 13.75 has to equal that. Or could I use even use the 8 over 10 if I felt like it? Could I go back to that one and use that? Would you prefer we did that? Do you like 8 over 10 better than 11 over 13.75? You do? Okay, we'll use that one. I like that one better, too. Any ideas on how to get this other one? Well, I'll help you out. Aaron, pick which one you want to solve for, Y or Z. He wants to solve for Y. All right, so we're going to leave Y in there. Over. Well, what if I told you Y was, uh, and I'm making this number up, what if I told you Y was 2.75? Could you tell me Z? How would you be able to tell me Z? Because you know... 
It's got to equal 6.75, exactly. So here's what we're going to do. Instead of calling this a z, we're going to call it 6.75 minus whatever y happens to be. Do you agree that to be true? Because I told you if y was 2.75, most of you probably wanted to tell me that that other one would be 4, right? You would just subtract it. Does that help us solve the problem if I put 6.75 minus y down there? It helps a lot because we went from having two variables to having the same variable twice, which is much better. So let's go ahead, and that right there is 10y. Now, what is it I told you to watch out here, though? you got to take 8 times the whole thing. Okay. And for space, is it okay if I erase the proportions up here so I have room to write a little higher? So we got 10y right there. So basically we're just bringing our work up here. Equals. We well take 8 times 6.75. What is it? 54? Is it minus y then? Minus 8y. You have to distribute. Well, have we turned this into a much easier problem to solve than the one we saw just, what, two minutes ago? Yeah, way easier because now what you're going to do is add 8y over. 8t and y equals, well, 54, because these cancel now. That's a horrible 18. Oh, sorry. Divide by 18. And y equals, does it come out perfectly to 3? Oh, yeah. Well, let's not forget, what really is y according to how we labeled things? EF, right? So this is EF up here is 3. So I'll write it in there as 3. Does that help me find AF? Well, you basically take 6.75 minus 3, and you get 3.75, which goes right there. So now you may see why I saved this for another day. Yes, Steve. Z, I think we chose. No, oh, great question, and I'm just going to repeat it again because it is being recorded. Uh, the question was, what if we went for Z first? Because I asked Erin, which one do you want to solve for? And she said, Y. But if we would have done that, the Z would have been down here, and 6.7, the Z would have been on the bottom, and 6.75 minus Z would have been on the top, and so they still would have switched places. It still would have worked out. Great question, though, because you might want to say, wait a minute, what would happen if I chose the other way? And we still would have been all right. It still would have worked out. Morgan? Yep, it would have been exactly the same. The only reason, and the question again, I'm repeating it, is the question was, what if we didn't use the 8 over 10 that we chose to use and we used, what was it, 11 over 13.75? It should have worked out the same, except I think the numbers would not have been as nice throughout the problem. But we had an 18 and a 54 worked out kind of nice. There would have been some more decimals involved, I think. But it still would have come out to 3 and 3.75. Okay, anything else? Once again, I think throwing this at you on that same day we did proportions may have been a little bit much. Okay. Everybody's good? 